Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Here to share with you a surprisingly awesome, awesome knife that I just received a couple of days ago. This is the Matt Diskin Wheel. And this particular version is a collaboration that he did with John Gray. John Gray did all of the blade grinding on this, and that's what really makes this one special for me. And I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, I had seen a couple of images of the wheel, didn't read about it, didn't really do any research. I thought it was kind of neat, but it didn't really seem to, I don't know, really uh, uh, tickle my asshole or anything. And then I saw a couple of guys talking about them at the New York Custom Knife Show going, holy shit, that wheel is really awesome. Uh, I ran into Matt a couple of times at the show, and I really love seeing Matt. He's a, he's a super awesome guy, um, and I, I just never got a chance to get to his table while he had one sitting there. Well, this knife was actually sitting there, and uh, Ricky from uh, StabbersSteelConnection.com is the dealer that purchased it. And when I saw Ricky's pictures on his website, and I saw the grind on it, I went, holy shit, I have to have this. Like, I had this feeling of, I can't live without this knife. So let's explain to you what makes this knife so special, then we'll get into the specs and we'll play around with it. This is a dual action knife. So as you see, very easy to open manually. Pretty sure you can flick it. Yeah, sure. But what really makes it neat is the fact that it's a dual action released by a rotating wheel. Now, I've shown you guys plenty of double actions on my channel in the past. From hidden scale releases to uh, Matt Diskin's scale release on the Diskin Fire to bolster releases and all kinds of other neat shit. But nobody's ever done, or at least I don't know of anyone that's ever done one, on a rotary switch. Now to give you a better idea what's happening, I'm just going to keep my finger out of the way and do it this way. So what you're doing is you're rotating it. And that was the way I thought that you were really supposed to do it from the get-go when I first opened the packaging. And then someone on Instagram went, well, there's a, there's a much more stable way of doing it where you're not going to let the knife fly out of your hand is you just simply lock your thumb in place and rotate the knife. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that feels a hell of a lot more stable. I dig that. This is not a knife that I would typically buy. Um, I like dual action knives, I love automatic knives, but they have a limited lifespan. You know, that, that spring in there is only going to fire so many times before it breaks. That's just the way it is. Uh, there's no getting around that. Matt himself will tell you. Actually, I've discussed that with Matt in the past. And uh, so for that reason, I generally don't buy them very often. But when it's in a knife this awesome, it was kind of like a no-brainer. So when we take a look at it, you have Matt's signature pivot right here that we saw on the Disc and Fire. Uh, I look at it, it looks like a circus tent to me. And I think that's pretty fucking cool. I really dig that. There is your rotating switch that releases the action. Nice milling all the way through the frame. There is basically a tab that you can unscrew and reverse your clip. So you have a filler tab like on a hinderer. So you've got the filler tab here that you could take out if you want to be a lefty and put the clip on that side. On this particular one, I don't know if this is the way it's done on all of them, uh, you'll notice kind of that rust color that's in between the hand checkering and inside of the thumb slot. That's actually front. It's not rust, by the way. Everybody keeps asking me on Instagram. It's not rust. Um, that is a, a remnant of it being heat treated. After you heat treat your knives, you generally will surface grind it or at least uh, sand it down to get rid of the scale. And what they've done is they've left that in there, or I should say he has left that in there, for contrast. And that's pretty fucking cool. I dig that too. Here is the back side. Uh, replication of the wheel milled into the frame. His uh, this very unique lock system that he's built into here. 
the custom pocket clip which is uh, bent titanium with a cap of carbon fiber. I like the idea because I've had two knives with carbon fiber clips. Both of those clips broke in very short order. So uh, the idea of having the look of a carbon fiber clip but having the durability of a titanium clip, I love. But there is a negative to that clip. We'll discuss it in a moment. Full length backspacer. We'll go ahead and get it open and show you the exceptional grind. Now, I am the kind of person, I do not like chisel ground blades. I now own two chisel ground knives, both of them ground by John Gray. Um, this he made for me four, three, maybe three years ago. And I was actually standing next to him as he was grinding this for me. And then... Uh, our buddy Jeff, Tough Knives, Tough Thumbs, whatever you want to call him these days, uh, did the handle work with the, uh, the moon glow underneath the uh, Black Pearl Kiranite. So I've had this for a long time. As you see, it's been used a hell of a lot. And it's still pretty damn sharp. Um, but I, I generally don't like a chisel ground blade because I want, a, uh, I want a ground on both fucking sides. But look at that! So this bevel is mirror polished, the front bevel is mirror polished, the very deep hollow grind in the center, which really is a fuller, but it's so much more than just the look of a fuller, um, that is a machine that's belt satin, then you have the top swedge, also, uh, yes, also hollow ground, nice belt satin, and this entire side is hand rubbed satin, with the belt satin in the hollow ground center groove. And the edge, by the way, is also a mirrored edge as well. This is an exceptionally ground blade. Um, I, I've been proud to call John a friend for a number of years. Is somebody that I uh, very much respect in the knife community, uh, both as a collector. He's got a really, really great taste in the knives that he owns, and as well as a knife maker. And his grinds are nothing short of awesome. Now, there are guys that will do flagrant grinds like this, and it's all about being flagrant and not so much about the performance. Everything John does is about performance. That blade, above all else, has to cut and has to perform. So whenever you buy a knife, whether it's something that John has made or he's done a grind in a collaboration with someone else's knife, you know that no matter how cool that blade may look, it's going to cut like a motherfucker. Now let's take a look inside. Get this. Make sure the spring is released. And I don't know how much you can really see inside, but you can see that those prongs are what's releasing that, that, uh, that spring back there, that big, large leaf spring back there, just by turning that. Now, I'm not going to load the spring and then fire it with the blade open because that's a good way to snap that fucking spring. And you can also see his lock mechanism, and you can see it working from this side as well. So basically the lock is an inset, like a, almost like a tab lock, but it is part of the frame too. That's, I mean, it's fucking crazy. So this tab, the way that I see it, is attached with this hardware to this cutout tension cut titanium. So it's the same basic idea as having a frame lock where you have to relieve tension on the bar, but that bar stops here. And it's then attached to this secondary lock, which you're actually locking up with and manipulating. How fucking crazy is that? And that may be unnecessarily complex, but I love seeing new lock designs. I love seeing somebody that thinks outside of the box, just to give you something different. Some bang for your buck. I mean, these are not cheap knives. Uh, mine, because of it being the collaboration and that additional work uh, by John, this was 1350. 
I have seen the prices of standard wheels vary anywhere between $900 on Blade HQ to $1195 on Knife Center. I don't know what the differences are. I didn't take the time to really take a look at them. Uh, there may be a few different levels of options, maybe in blade steel or finishes, but I am unaware of those. So you'll have to kind of search around and find the best price for yourself. Uh, mine was more expensive because of that grind. This is the only one that exists uh, that was ground by John. So if it stays that way, this will remain forever special. So you've got uh, just a touch over a three and a half inch blade. It's eight and a quarter inches overall, and it's surprisingly slim. Um, I had this out for the last video that I made, so I'll just make that comparison there. Um, so here is another uh, three and a half inch, actually it's three and three quarter inch blade. Uh, so just about the same, just a little bit smaller on the wheel. And you see how much thicker the Decepticon knife is. When I received it, and I got the pouch. The pouch is almost the same size as the knife. I was expecting a much larger pouch. I'm like, oh shit, this knife is a lot smaller than I was expecting it to be. And I pull it out, and I realized it's smaller, slimmer, and lighter weight than I expected it to be, which made me even more happy. And from the very first time I looked at that grind, and the very first time I fired it open, I was exceedingly happy. I couldn't be happier with this purchase. Now, uh, as with everything, you know, nothing ever gets a free pass. There's always going to be pros and cons. Um, it's, it's about the clip for me. You'll notice I had to put my own uh, paracord on here. By the way, this, for the, anybody that's going to ask, this is a blued Damascus bead made by Enrique Pena. If you want to get one for yourself. I don't know if he still makes them, but there it is. Anyway. The clip fucking sucks. Now, wait, wait, before before you take that as being uh, the end-all, be-all, that, that, that comes with a caveat. It fucking sucks for me. Um, if you like a deep carry pocket clip and you have found a way to easily manipulate a knife with a deep carry pocket clip, then you probably won't have any issues. I don't like deep carry pocket clips. I despise them because when they're made that way, there's nothing to fucking grab onto to get the knife out of your pocket. This clip has excellent retention. It is made fantastically well. But because of that, and you have nothing, your entire knife is now in your pocket. There is no body of the knife for you to grab onto to extract it. So the only thing you can do is you're going to slide your thumb in, and this is the only part of the knife that you can access outside of your pocket. So, because it's a tight fit, your fingers slip off of it. If you tighten your grip, you're tightening the tension on your fucking pocket. Yeah. So, I needed to put a lanyard on it so I could pop it out of my pocket. If this, and the lanyard hole is tragically small. It, it barely fits a uh, paracord single through there. I wanted to do just one and run it through and tie it off. No, I had to, to tie one myself. Not the worst thing in the world. I just I wish there was room. And it's not that he did anything wrong. There's just only so much room in that area to put the uh, to put the holes. So that's just the way it is. Uh, but if it didn't have a lanyard hole, I would have immediately sold this knife because I could I wouldn't have carried it. I wouldn't have carried it because of how cumbersome it is. I want to have something at least to grab onto with part of my hand or my fingers, but there isn't. The only thing is that clip, and when you push on it, you make it too tight to get out. That's the only flaw that I find in this knife design. And again, if you're one of those guys that only carries deep carry clips, and you don't mind the fact that you're having to do goofy shit to pull it out or change your handhold, I want my hand in the same position that it's going to be in when I need to deploy the knife. I don't want to change my hand position from my draw to then having it out to deploy it. I, I just, I, I, I don't accept that. So anytime I grab any of my knives, it comes out and I'm ready to flip it open or thumb it open or whatever the uh, mechanism may be. So again, if you're into deep carry clips, that's not even going to be an issue for you. It's just a, a, a particular for me. I got to tell you, um, I'm blown away by it. I was 
instantly in love. And there's only really a few knives that do that to me. And it really is mainly about the exotic nature of the opening mechanism and John's absolutely fantastic grind. And the fact that it is stupid fucking sharp. It is crazy, crazy sharp. Now, the unfortunate thing is, um, even though now I'm making knives and, and obviously I know how to grind and sharpen them, this is still the kind of blade that um, when that gets too dull, that stropping no longer does any good and I've got to put a new edge on it, I'm going to have to drop it in the mail and send it to John because I am not fucking with that. Look at that mirror polish on there. Look how beautiful that is. You slip. You make a tiny little slip when you're bringing it up to the grinder and you've ruined that beautiful mirror polish. So uh, I'll let John have that headache. That's just the way I look at it. As far as the ergonomics, Matt did a fantastic job. There is a nice deep choil there. There is, by the way, a choil in the blade so you can choke up on it. And the way that he's designed the drop-off on the spine of the blade is exactly where your thumb lands when you choke up. So he took a lot of time. You can definitely tell he took a lot of time and he put this, whatever template he was using as he was prototyping this, you could tell he put this in his hand and he made it all work. Uh, nice deep choil there, very comfortable. Frame comes out, so it fills up your, your, the, uh, you know, your hand and your fingers. It tapers here, and basically you have a double choil here so that even your pinky has somewhere to hang on. Really, really nicely done. So the, there's only two things I would change on this knife for my personal taste. Uh, the clip I've already gone over, and the shape of this thumb hole. The only problem with it is, because it's left a little bit raw, there are edges there. If, if you sat down with a hand file and you went and really softened those edges, it wouldn't be a big deal. But what happens is, as you're opening it, your thumb pushes in all the way into that large area. But as you're moving the blade, what happens? Your thumb is now going up here into the skinnier part. So you're feeling it become pinched, and it's being pinched into sharp edges. That's the only thing I would change. If the shape must remain this way, um, I would definitely be filing all of that down to make it a softer, a softer place for your thumb to go. Uh, otherwise, changing it to something that's a little bit more standard, just an oval, uh, would really eliminate that problem because the difference is the fat of your thumb is going in that large recessed area and then it's being forced uh, into that much narrower area. But that's it. And if that's the worst things you can say about a knife design, oh yeah, at that point you're nitpicking. That's all you're doing is nitpicking. Because everything else is so phenomenally done. Yeah, I truly cannot get over how badass that grind is. And I tell you right now, I'm very thankful that John put the fuller into the uh, flat side because, again, chisel ground blades are boring as shit to me. You know, you've got a nice cool grind here on this side, then you flip it over. It's just a flat piece of steel. What the shit, man? Nope. Uh, he did add a lot of character to that side of the blade. So, yeah. The whole thing is just fantastic. Uh, the knife was designed exceptionally. So it's got, a, it's got a great size, great thickness, great weight, great feel. The ergonomics are fantastic. The action on the knife is fantastic. Very, very hard firing automatic action on this. You want to make sure the first time that you open this knife, and again, do, do, do as I'm explaining to you now. Put your thumb on there and squeeze tightly and rotate the frame because that's going to force you to squeeze the knife because the first time you fire this it could fly out of your hand I don't know how it didn't on me because I, I was just doing this I was pulling back on it come on and I didn't really have a very secure hold and it went like that in my hand I went oh shit I don't know if I really dig this or not and then like I said I posted a quick video of it on uh, on my Instagram and somebody went no 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 just squeeze it at the disc and rotate the frame. 
and hot damn if that wasn't the key. So yeah, I mean everything about this is amazing. Uh, absolutely worth every penny that I paid. Uh, I'm very, I feel very fortunate to actually own this. Again, a uh, big thing for me is I have a, a great amount of respect for uh, uh, for Matt. And it's funny, you know, as, as nice as Matt is to me, it's really funny because I still, I still remember Blade Show 2014. I, I had come up to him to get one of his, he had brought some custom hand ground uh, fires. And I already had a fire that I loved and thought it was the most amazing thing. And he says, yeah, I've still got one left over there with the mirror polished, hand ground, compound grind. I said, do me a favor, hold it for me. I'm going to come back and I'm going to go find you in a couple minutes and grab it. And I got so tied up. And you guys know this if you've ever been to the Blade Show. It's really, really easy to get tied up there and, uh, and, and not go back to where you want it to be. And I got so tied up that I forgot. And by the time I saw Matt again, it was either in the pit later that night or it was the next day. And I felt like shit because there I was telling him, hey, hold that knife for me. I'm going to come buy it. And I didn't follow through and I really felt like shit about it. So the next time I saw him, I was kind of worried that he'd remember that and go, hey, you're a fucking dick. And no, he just treated me like he always has, you know, like, you know, like he's your neighbor. And that's pretty fucking cool. So, uh, uh. Mad props, as the kids like to say, to Matt Diskin for being an awesome dude. And uh, as I said, I've been friends with John for years. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the work that he does and how hard he's worked to get to where he is in the industry. And I still feel he is one of the most underrated knife makers in the community today. Those of us that have been around it for a while, those of us that really came up in the YouTube community back in the days when uh, Jeff and Vance and everybody was making videos, you know, that's how I learned about John, and I'm very thankful for that. But there are a lot of people out there that have never heard of him, that don't know the work that he does, that have never seen a thuck. And you're really missing out, man. You're, you're missing out on some cool shit. So definitely check out John Gray. Uh, check out the work that he does. Follow him on Instagram. Same thing with Matt. Uh, support guys that work this hard and uh, do as much as they do to support the community because John's one of those guys that if you're a knife maker, whether you've been doing it for 10 years or 10 minutes, he's the kind of guy that you can call up and go, hey man, I saw you were doing this. I can't figure it out. Could you give me a hand? And he'll sit on the phone with you for two hours and tell you everything that he knows about whatever it is that you're asking. He's, uh, he's a very good guy like that. And those are the kind of makers that we should be supporting. All right, I'm going to quit rambling now at this point. So as you can tell, very, very excited. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to get on out of here and uh, catch up with you later on some new videos. I've got so much shit here to do, and I'm sorry I've fallen behind, but I'm trying to make up for it this week. Catch you guys on the next video.